Hey, Walton Mike here with uh, StogieReview.com for uh, an episode, I guess it's number 46 of YQMA. I guess you can call this season two since it's, since it's, been, it's been so long since we've done one of these. And, uh, you know, we really don't have a, a, a show schedule set up or anything. It is just completely off the cuff, just kind of, we're just going with it. So uh, if we get off track, you know, that's probably what's going to happen, so don't get too upset if this if this thing winds up going really long but uh, we have n really no idea of what we're doing it was just uh, we both had some time and uh, so we sat down in front of a computer and made something of that spare time grabbed a cigar grabbed a drink here we go <laughs> so what are you smoking Mike yours is already lit doesn't look like it has a band on it no it's actually my first one it's a Fuente uh, curly head okay First one I've had of these. I, I never found them locally. Uh, shop just got them in. I mean, it's only like four bucks, somewhere around there. Oh, really? And somebody said they're short filler. But it's it's not bad so far. Not bad at all. I don't know. I think you might have been gouged. I remember those things being like two bucks. Actually, hmm. I remember the Curly Head Deluxes being like $1.95. <laughs> but maybe wow. the price is going up. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, now I'm going to dig my thing out of the trash. Wait a minute here. Yeah, it's, it's been a really long time since I've had one. I used to pick them up every now and again yeah. just to kind of smoke when I was busy. Now it's not going to focus. You son of a bitch. I think. Four there you go. 425 I don't know. Maybe the price went up where I'm remembering wrong, but I remember those being really inexpensive. Oh well, you live and learn. I get that's that's actually going to lead us into uh, one of the things I want to talk about. But you know, I kind of want to banter back and forth a little bit first. And uh, you've got a glass in your hand. I I know what it is, but why don't you tell everyone else what you've got there? Well, uh, of course, ever since Walt may be into an alcoholic now, um, I've been doing the Zaya. Turn it sideways, maybe you can see it. Zaya rum, and uh, I like it with ice. Uh, sue me, hurt me, kill me, whatever. Um, but I, I really enjoy it. it. It's a nice, it's a sweeter, it, it's really a sweet rum. And I, I think it brings out a lot of nuances in the cigar. And I, I don't know, now I've never had it, Walt can probably tell you better than I can, but I've never had it with a real strong cigar. I don't know if it'll stand up to that or not. Oh yeah, definitely. It, uh, actually, I'm drinking it as well. And uh, you can chastise me because I'm drinking it with ice as well. Only mine doesn't have the fancy ice sphere in it that Mike does. I just grabbed the ice out of the ice maker. Um, I have a you ball. Know, it, it's it's kind of strange. The, I like rum with ice. Not, not all of it. Zaya especially, though. Um, I like it when the, else, the ice melts a little bit. It, it waters down just a little bit. I like it that way. Uh, sue me. When it comes to, like, Ronza Kappa or something like that, I like that neat. Uh, I drink scotch neat. Bourbon, on the other hand, I can go either way. I Some bourbons I like with a little bit of ice. Um, others I drink neat. So it, it really depends on what I'm drinking, whether or not I add ice. When it, when it comes to Zai, I always add ice, and, you know, I always kind of get a hard time for it. But I really don't care because that's the way I like it. And uh, cigar I am smoking. I can't get anywhere near close to the camera because I've got a laptop in my lap but uh, I've got the uh, one of the old Laguerre Cubana uh, Artisano de Miami I'm sure I butchered the name but uh, I got a box of these quite some time ago and these just happened to be at the bottom of my really horribly organized cooler and uh, I know I wanted one it's been quite a while since I had one because they're buried in the bottom of the cooler so I decided to go in there and get one. And, you know, I had to pull off, like, the top layer of loose, you know, Ziploc bags of cigars. And then, you know, I had to move a couple of boxes and dig down deep. Finally, I get the box open, and I start to see everything caving in slowly towards the inside. So I'm, like, jamming my arm down inside the cooler, trying to keep the two mountains from collapsing in the, in the hole that I just made. And I'm fidgeting with the box, trying to get it open with one hand, and I couldn't. So finally, I, like let everything go, threw the box open real quick, st stuck my hands back in there, but by the time I did that, you know, the whole thing just collapsed. And then I spent 15 minutes getting it cleaned up enough for me to get the box back 
back in it and shut the lid. So I really need to organize my cooler. It is an absolute mess. I hate That's to say it, but it's stuff. a mess. <laughs> it's the fun stuff. Then you get to see everything that fell in. Then as you're pulling it out, you can say, ooh, I forgot I had that. Well, you know what? The funny thing you say that because I didn't. I completely forgot I had a. I had an actual humidor inside the cooler from, uh, like Cigar Fest two thousand nine. I'm like, oh. what is this? It's, it's the the humidor that I got from Cigar Fest, full of all the cigars that I got from Cigar Fest. The air pockets, the you know the the shipping pockets. Right. Well, they were put inside the humidor so they didn't bounce around when they were handing them out. The air pockets still full are in there. The humidification device in the box is still in there. I just took the entire humidor and stuck it in the cooler, and it just got piled over. I didn't even know I had it. Hey, so, as yeah. long as it kept the humidity in there, hey. <laughs> I found a, a sample box from the 2008 or nine IPCPR that uh, Oliva put together. It was just a, an IPCPR sample. It's stamped, you know, 2000-whatever, Las Vegas. I forgot that that was in there. So it was kind of cool seeing all that new stuff, but uh, I really have to do something to get it organized. It's not the way I want to find new stuff is, uh, you know, when it, when it's falling all over the place. Well, now you, you'll forget about it anyway till next time you go in there probably. <laughs> probably. But it's all right. It's, yeah. I, and, and the worst part is I have three other coolers that are in just as much disarray. Now I'm using now for the stuff that I buy locally and that I'm getting re lately. It's all been going inside of uh, just a, a small desktop humidor that I've had forever, and I've been using it as sort of like day to day cigars. I'll just put stuff in there loose and grab them out. And I've also got like miscellaneous Ziploc bags with humidification units tossed inside and just kind of laying around in the in the room. It's it's neat. horrible. You, you, you'll have to go through sometime and let everybody know what the oldest cigar is that you have in there. Because you'll find something in there that's probably from eons ago. <laughs> well, I, I can pretty much tell you that. Uh, I still have at least half of the first box of cigars I ever bought. And that was back, I don't know, they're probably at least five years old. When I first started getting into cigars, I was buying a lot of samplers. You know, the, the mixed bundles and stuff like that. And I guess it was maybe a year after I really got into the hobby that I decided to, to buy my first box. And I got a box of Sancho Panza Extra Fuerte. And uh, I should have maybe not quite a half a box, but there should be some left over from that box buried in the bottom of one of those coolers. And then I went through a labeling phase where I have stickers on all my cigars from you know the size, the information, and when I purchased it. So there's a phase of labeled cigars in there. It's somewhere. Yeah, I got some like that from you that time you sent me. <laughs> yeah, I was doing a little bit of cleanup when I uh, when I put that package together for you. Now, what lighter is that? This is one that I actually have to review yet. It is uh, it's a Prometheus table torch. It, there's really nothing fancy about it. It's got a flip up lid, and the ignition is actually on the back. You squeeze it and. It ignites like 90% of the time. Uh, it's triple flame. It's kind of cool. I've been using it a lot just because I want to I wanna type up a review and do a video on it. Um, actually, this is the lighter, more or less, that we gave away last month. I have another one to give away. It's in a, a sample box, four cigars, and this table torch. Uh, I gave away the Angelenos box. Actually, I just shipped that out early this week to the winner. And I've got one more for Sencio to put together and, and do a contest on. So if you like this lighter, you can win one, or you can win one that says Sencio on it and comes with four cigars. Stay tuned to Stogie Review. I have no idea how we're going to give that away yet or, or what I want to do with that. But uh, we're definitely giving it away. I just need to come up with a creative way of doing it where we're going to get uh, you know lots of participation. <laughs> yeah, it just looks... It looks uh... Like it's pretty beefy. Looks like it would hold a lot of butane. Because it's triple flame, it, it burns out pretty fast. I mean, it's... You can go through at least a dozen cigars with this. Actually, probably more. The, you know, the weird thing with Prometheus products, especially the, the retro lighter that I reviewed before, is uh, they, like, stop working when they run out of fluid. I, 
I know you're thinking to yourself, well, okay, it doesn't have fluid. Of course it's not going to work. But but they don't die down. Like, the flame doesn't get weak. You know, it works just like it's supposed to, and then that's it. It stops working. It's out of fluid. Huh. It, like, a, like a switch goes off. It's it's pretty cool. But uh, because they don't have, like, the, the fill gate, the fill, you know, ports on them, so you can see right. how much fluid's in there, you never really know. You just kind of have to make an educated guess. Yeah, that 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 is one thing I wish more manufacturers do. I wish they would put some sort of gauge on there so you would know how much butane is actually in there. Uh, I know when you fill them, mm-hmm. you know, once it squirts out, you know, it's pretty much full. But well, I also I mean, like uh, Zycar does these really big thumb knobs on the bottom or fuel adjustment gauges. Yeah, those are great too. I mean, the the Prometheus one is not is well, it's integrated. It's in the bottom of this lighter, but. It's loose enough that I can actually just use a fingernail to turn it up and down. But a lot of times, you know, these lighters, you need a screwdriver or something similar to turn them up and down. And uh, they can be a bit of a headache to, to adjust. That's how this Zycar, I have a Zycar incline that looks like it went through a war. And uh, that's how this one is. I mean, you know, to, to turn it up and down, it's that little, you have to almost put a screwdriver. And like, well, I think you had said before, like your, uh, was it MTX? Yeah. The scissors? You know that has a you can put that in and, and adjust it. You know with that little little piece that's in it. No, so I guess all of the Zycar lighters don't have the the big knob. I guess only some of them do. Yeah, mine. Like I said, I mean that's the only one that I have. That's the only lighter like that I have. I just use my torches for everything else. Yeah, I have one of those too. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> and you know, I get a lot of questions about what this is. I mean, it says Rocky Patel on it, but it's basically just a creme brulee torch. You know, go to Bed Bath and Beyond and pick one up for, you know, fifteen twenty bucks. You know, you'll you'll probably get the little creme brulee dishes with it. You can use them if you want, but uh, you know, buy it for the torch alone, and uh, it'll have paid it for itself. This lighter is, I don't know, four years old, and it's still going strong. It's you know, it's an old workhorse. It, it works really well. Now, see, now, mine, I had one of these before, and it broke because I took and I removed that child safety thing down here on the bottom because they're just a pain in the rear. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, then, it only lasted maybe six months, and then all of a sudden, the clicker doesn't work anymore where it doesn't, like, I guess it's what, I don't know what they call them, like that piezo electro. Mm-hmm. It's a little electronic, little shock in there that lights it, I guess. And that just quit working on it. But uh, so I got another one, and you're right, Bed Bath and Beyond, exactly where I got it. I mean, you can, it's a, you can look in the box, and you'll see the micro torch label on the top, and uh, mine even, you know, came with the little stand and the four creme brulee little dishes that ended up in the trash. <laughs> <laughs> but and it was twenty bucks, I think, you know, and it holds so much fluid, it it's amazing. Yeah, I've got to fill mine up, like, I don't know, once a month, once every six weeks, something like that. It, it lasts a really long time. Yeah, it's it's crazy long. That's now, of course, you said. don't want to carry it around your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, we've uh, you, you showed us the band from the uh, the Fuente Curly head that you got, and uh, you, know, you know we talked a little bit about how I, I thought it was more expensive, or thought it was less expensive, but... Uh, in the last review I did, this Gurkha Evil, I had mentioned about uh, the, the Gurkha pricing structure and how I dislike it and how I don't buy Gurkha product because of it. And uh, basically, if you haven't watched the video, what what I was saying in a nutshell was that uh, since I buy everything local, I, you know, I don't really order very much of anything online. I, I you know I try to stay within a budget for myself. And when it comes to Gurkha product, it's usually at the high end of that budget. And if you go online, it's like dirt cheap. And, you know, personally, I see that as like too big of a gap where you've got, for instance, the, in the in the, in the example of the, the Gurkha Cognac or the Gurkha Grand Reserve that I used in that video, you, you've got that locally $12. And you mentioned that you, you bought one of those online, a 10-pack for $3 or $3 a cigar, $30 for the, the 10-pack. And, uh, you know, I kind of felt like I was being gouged buying them locally because of the the price structure and here you have a cigar that's that's sort of the same way i remember them being really inexpensive especially online 
and here you've got you know a cigar that's 425 I don't know whether that has to do with taxes or price increases over the years or what the case may be but is there a is there a price range where you feel comfortable spending so much money on a cigar locally versus you know seeing that same cigar on the shelf and saying you know that's way too expensive locally I won't buy it I'll get it online <laughs> well yeah and uh, you brought up Gurkha, and that, that's the big one for me, too. Uh, I used to smoke a lot of the vintage Shaggy XOs uh, that Gurkha did. I think I gave one to you, uh, where they have the Shaggy foot on them. And locally, I mean, if you buy them locally, I mean, you're looking, I think they were like 8 to 10 bucks a piece. But if you would go online, I found them before for right around the $3 mark for those cigars online. And it, it's more of a thing where... I. I would love to know. I see. I don't. That's where it would be nice to see inside of a company, to see. Okay, well, what are they actually selling them to the shop for compared to what are they selling to online people for? You know, are they selling at the same price, or be, do the online places get a huge discount because they're buying, you know, a thousand boxes at a time or something? Where your local guy just can't do that. But yeah, that that's just. Uh, and like you said with the cognac, I was those. Uh, they were thirteen, I think thirteen twenty-five for the Churchill size of the Grand Reserve cognacs for me when I was buying them locally, and then I found those. Now those were only robustos and torpedoes, I think, online, but they ran them on sale for three bucks a piece. I mean, that's just that it, it's crazy. Even even like the uh, box price for those, I, I think there's way too much of a discrepancy because box price for those i think you can get them for six something a stick if you buy it's not a box it's like a it's a 30 count stand mm -hmm. I, I don't know what you would call them and i just think that's too much of a discrepancy because like and everybody's making a profit they have to be you know in order to sell the bot the 30 packs or the singles and it's just, I, I just don't know how their pricing structure is from the factory on how it works. But Well, I, I would definitely imagine that places like Cigars International are getting a bulk purchase discount because of the sheer volume that they, they sell. And um, a lot of times you can buy, they're not, not consumers can buy, but, uh, you know, resellers can buy refill packs. Like, uh, you know, you, you may get a, just a bundle of 20 or 30 cigars that the retailer would then break up and put inside the box to, to reduce cost. You know, I would imagine some place like Cigars International is, is purchasing those for those 10 packs or for the 5 packs or whatever. So, you know, you're, you're not paying for, you know, the box and, and everything that, that goes along with packing the box and everything like that, the insert, you know, all that stuff that goes with it. So I would imagine there's some savings there, but especially with Gurkha, I mean, I, I just feel... I kind of feel like I'm like I would be gouged if I bought locally because of the huge price difference. Um, but you know, is there is there a price price range where you feel comfortable paying the premium for for purchasing locally? Wow, that's hard to say. I well, mean, well, like the, the I I made the example of I don't mind paying six dollars a stick for an Oliva O locally. And and seeing them listed a five pack for like twenty five dollars online twenty five thirty dollars whatever the price may be and there, there was someone that commented saying that you know that was a twenty percent discrepancy between the two and you know he wasn't comfortable paying the twenty percent I didn't realize it at the time that it was actually a twenty percent variance but uh, in the case where I'm buying locally I didn't I don't really mind paying that extra dollar for you know the free cup of coffee that I'm going to get for the the uh, the 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 big leather chair to sit in and and you know kick back in, but, you know is is there like a, a is there a zone where you where you kind of feel the same way where you don't mind paying maybe a dollar more or two dollars more or whatever the price may be? Yeah, I mean between a dollar or two. Sometimes now depending like if it's a really higher end, like a uh, I know the one local shop over there in uh, Columbia had. Uh, the La Roar with the 100 Anyas, they still had some of those left, you know, the Robusto size, and they were like 10 something a piece, which I think was a good price, actually. But, you know, if they would be online for $7 a piece, I would still feel comfortable buying it locally in the shop, just because that's not a cigar I'm not going to buy, you know, like 
a box of them. I'd, I'd buy one to smoke for, you know, an occasion or something like that. Um, and that, that lessens the impact for me, I believe. Um, but yeah, usually a dollar to maybe up to three, but that's only if I'm picking like one up to smoke there. You know, after that, it just gets to be too much of a discrepancy for me to feel comfortable with. I mean, are, you, you're in the same boat, I think you were saying. You know, like a dollar or two is about what you like to pay. Or, yeah, I, I don't mind paying, you know, maybe one up, upwards of maybe two dollars difference, you know, but between local and online pricing. You know, but, but again, you know, I'm not paying for the cup of coffee or the bottle of water that the, the cigar shop owner hands me or, or where, the, you know, the place to sit, things like that. So it's, I, I you know, I don't mind that extra, that premium for, for all that I'm getting. You know, if I were just going into the cigar shop, making my purchase and leaving, I think it would be different. But, you know, I, in most cases, I'm not. If I'm going to a cigar shop, I'm there for at least an hour. Yeah, to sit there and smoke a cigar and you, know, you have the camaraderie. I mean, you have, you know the big screen TVs usually, you know, there is a lot to them. It's just like, you know, in, in my area, I just don't have that a whole lot. And that's where, you know, with my, with my purchase, I, I found that one store that I buy from a lot and then, uh, online for me, just because of the fact I just don't have that around here. I mean, that's a, you, Brian and Jerry are, are lucky with that. They use have, shops that are pretty close well yours just closed though yeah it's uh you know it's kind of funny the last week it was it was, it was a real somber mood kind of depressing it was in there for the the closing day uh i hung out I, you know I, I pulled the shift i was there like 15 minutes after he opened and i was there maybe 20 minutes after he closed and uh you know, I was hanging out and, and talking to him, and, it, and you know, it was kind of bumming me out. You know, you know, where am I going to go next week? And you know, next week rolled around. Yesterday, I got in the car and I drove 45 minutes to the next shop that I like going to, and I just can't do it. My 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 time is really tight, especially on a Friday, because I work. Uh, my day starts at 6 a.m. I'm actually at my desk at 6 a.m. I work extra hours throughout the week because my company closes early on Fridays. So I only work a half a day on Friday. And uh, my babysitter has my daughter for for so long. Generally, I pick her up at about 1 o'clock. So at 11 o'clock, I would leave work and run over to Kensington, which was five minutes away. You know, it's you know, right in the general area. I could walk if I wanted to. But uh, I used to shoot over to Kensington, hang out for an hour and a half, and then go drive over to the babysitter, get my daughter, and, and you know, do the rest of the th- the things that you do on a Friday with a kid. But uh, with Kensington closed, it was like, okay, I, I can go to the other cigar shop, which is like two minutes from my house. But I won't because I don't, it's, I don't know, I, I just don't like going there and I don't want to support them. For a long time, they were Kensington's competition. I'm, I'm really loyal. I didn't want to go there. Even now that Kurt is closed, I still did not want to shop at that store. And there's uh there's a couple of other small shops in the area which don't have lounges. There's actually a guy, his brother has a, I think it's a chain of cigar shops out in the New York area. And this brother moves to Pennsylvania and decides he's going to open up a Getty Mart. And what he ends up doing is he opens his Getty Mart and his brother's getting a good deal on all these cigars because he's buying in, in quantity. And so he's, he decides he's going to buy cigars from his brother and sell them in his Getty Mart. And he ends up getting like four or five of these cabinets and puts them in the store and they start to take off. He's selling them for a good price. You know, people are coming in and buying them and, and he opens up, you know, another convenience store slash gas station and he does the same thing, puts the cigars in those and then he opens up a third one, does the same thing. So I've got three of these gas station slash cigar merchants in the area they don't have lounges. Uh, some of the cigars don't look so great because, you know, they're not tobacconists. They don't completely understand what they're doing to maintain them. So I don't like buying from them. I don't like buying for from uh, Kensington's old competitor, even though they do have a very big lounge. And uh, there's one other shop that I think is closing, which is inside of a mall. They're inside of another mall, and I, I've never had good experiences there either. The next closest shop was Sir Stogie's. 
And I thought, well, you know what? I'm going to talk to the babysitter. I'll get her to watch my daughter a little bit longer. And, uh, and it wasn't a big deal. And I ended up driving down there. And it took 45 minutes. So I spent an hour and a half driving to and from there. It was just, it's just too much of a time investment. So I really don't know what I'm going to do, you know, on that Friday that I generally used to spend at a cigar shop. I may, you know, I may take a cigar to work and find a park or something if it's nice out before I go to pick up my daughter. But I don't mind driving down to this other shop on like a Saturday or something. But, uh, you know, free time is, is tough to come by at, at this stage in life. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do. I am, I'm kind of in the same boat as you where, you know, the closest shop that I want to purchase from is, you know, a half an hour away, 45 minutes away. Yeah. Yeah, it is. That, that is the toughest thing in this area, if you can even see me. My Lord, this thing really puts off some smoke. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's rough. And like you said, you'll, you'll find out now because it, it takes so long to get to a shop. You know, you figure in your, your driving time, and then you're at the shop if you want to smoke a cigar or talk to people or whatever. I mean, you're talking three-hour investment easily, you know, because of all the extra driving time. So, Yeah, and, we're in, and this, this isn't a new shop for me. I've been going there for a couple of months here and there. I don't, I, I don't know, I probably average maybe two to three visits a month. So I'm I'm known there. I talk to the the owner. We we get along really well. But it's not Kensington. Uh, you know the, the perks of going to a cigar shop every week for four years is that you know when reps come in, you know they leave samples for me to try, and I get industry news. Uh, the owner has been around for twelve years or something like that. So, you know he knows a lot of people in the industry. He, you know, reps and other people will confide information to him, and you know he'll and then. Give me, you know, what's what I can talk about. Even stuff that I can't talk about, you know, I learn from him about the industry. So, you know, not having that source of information is is kind going to kind of suck. And the fact that I've been going in there for so long, it it, it came with a discount. So that that the, the discount is no longer there, which kind of sucks. And uh, you know, just the just the fact that hanging out with the with Kurt, the owner, is not doing that every week is going to kind of suck because. Uh, as I said, I've been doing that for four years. Actually, in the last like maybe year and a half, I stopped hanging out in the lounge. I just hung out in the in the main sales area and just talked to talked to the owner. the uh, The politics started getting a little too much for me in the lounge, so I just kind of hung out with the owner. So you know, there's a lot that that I'm going to miss. Well, see, that's like that. Well, that shop uh, you were at it once over there in Columbia. Um, you know, it it's. A really nice lounge. I, I I mean they have they have a pull down screen with a projector and everything in that lounge. Is that a members and only lounge or just no. anyone? No, any as long as I think you have to buy a cigar you have to spend at least five dollars on cigars and you can use the lounge. That's that's cool. all it is. And uh I mean this this time I actually met uh Rob over there, uh General Griff on uh Twitter. And he came in from Philadelphia and I met him over there and I just I took the sleeve off my cigar and just asked them if they could just hold on to them. And I just, you know, left them lay there until the end. And then I bought whatever cigars I wanted, paid for everything at once, rather than doing all these little purchases here and there. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're, they're really nice. Uh, the only problem with it, like, you know, like at your shop, there's a tobacconist there. You know, the owner's there. There's no tobacconist at this shop. You know, it's basically a, I don't know how you even want to say it. It's a, it's a tobacco shop. You know, they sell loose cigarette tobacco, pipe tobacco, you know, cigarettes, lottery tickets, you know, things like that. And it's owned by the, it's actually owned by the grocery store that's on the end. Uh, Muster's Market, I think it is. I think he's the one that actually owns it. So, you know, it, it's great. I mean, the prices are usually, are, are usually good. I get it. You know, you can, you can buy a card for, five bucks, 10 bucks, whatever it is. And you get 10% off all your cigars, boxes, singles, whatever, you know, the nice lounge it's there. But if you ever have any questions, you're likely going to have to go somewhere else to get answers. You know, that's, that's the downfall to it. Um, yeah, I mean, I really, I really like that shop. Um, but then like you said, I mean, that takes me, 
40, 45 minutes to get to, you know, to get over there. I mean, 30 minutes if traffic's good or if I forget the speed limit signs. But <laughs> Yeah, I, I was at that, I was only there that once for your party. And, you know, it's it's a nice place, and the prices were great to begin with before you even applied that discount. Uh, I also like that, that shop in Lancaster. Um, I forget the name. Old World. Yeah. Old World, yep. I, I I especially like the coffee, the fact that they roast their own coffee in store. Yeah. And, and I, you know, I thought that was really cool. And, you know, the, the store was kind of nice, too. I need I need to get down there again at some point. It's been I haven't been there since the last time I met you there for that Oliva event. Oliva, yeah, with the cane. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when the cane came out. That was, what, like a year and a half ago, maybe? Yeah, it, it's a great shop. I mean, for me, I usually hit the one in Columbia just because of the fact it's closer. And the prices are, are better. Um. But now the one like you were talking, you know, with the with a shop that you want to go to. I mean, they had what three different lounges, I think, in there. Now they have an outdoor deck that they put on, you know, to, to smoke at. They have events there. See, like this this store in Columbia, no events. You know, very few and far between mm-hmm. that they have anything at the Columbia one. You know, and I, I do like that one over on Old World. The the biggest downfall to it, and you can probably attest to this is the location because of getting in and out of that main highway right there, especially if you want to go west. Yeah, I was, I don't remember which direction I was coming from, but they were on the other side of the divided highway. I had to go in the mall and actually turn around to get on the other side. I mean, leaving, going back home was convenient. It was just kind of pull out on the divided highway and head on home. But right, getting yeah. into the lounge is kind of difficult. Um, it's unpaved and, uh, Parking really wasn't tight, but it was kind of scattered because there's no real parking spots. It's just kind of pull in wherever you can fit, and it kind of became a bit of a mess during that event. Yeah. Yeah, that's, you know, that thing. And it, well, and I even run into that problem down in Maryland at the Humidor. You know, their their parking is I great. hate their parking. Yeah. They're, it's <laughs> great unless they have an event, and then their parking lot is just horrible. It's like... You know, if a car is going to turn in, you have to back up because they can't get in unless you do. I remember and, I was there for uh, for a nub event, and uh, my wife and I, it, it just happened to work out because my wife and I were going to a wedding that was like halfway between my house and Maryland. So on the wedding day, I actually shot, dropped the stuff off the hotel and then ran down to Maryland to, to see Sam and, and hang out at that event. And... Um, I get there and there's no parking and there's like a, a connected parking lot. So I, I pull into the other parking lot. I take a real far space. Not that there's a lot of spaces to begin with. And I'm there for about an hour before someone comes over and says, Hey, look, anyone that's here that's parked in my lot, you know, I'm, I'm towing cars, you know, you got to get them out of there. So, and then I ended up parking like down the highway off to the side in some like abandoned lot. So that was Parking there was really rough, but I hear they do valet parking, which is super convenient if you don't mind handing your keys over to a total stranger. They didn't and, uh, last time. No, they didn't? No. The last time I was down there at the Tatawahi event, um, I was actually mean and evil, but I was parked in the lot at the at the very back, and they came around and said that anybody's here that's going to stay for the event, they were parking them across the street. I think uh, uh, Chris and Brian and Chris's dad – from Nice Tight Ash, I, I think they were down there, and they had to park across the the street at like a gas station or something that's over there, or a service garage or something, and then you had to walk across the highway. Yeah, and it's like, <laughs> yeah, I, I was I was bad, but I I just kind of stayed there. I I I didn't move, but I mean, yeah, I, I I've been hearing they're trying to do something about the parking, but they haven't had much luck with it yet. And really, that's the only downside of that shop. It's, it's a beautiful shop with a tremendous selection. The pricing is not bad. The owner is really nice. Actually, she gave me my absolute favorite travel humidor. I'd, I'd show it to you, but it's in the in the walk-in. But uh, I guess they do a, a female theme every year. Every year they have a different girl that they use as uh, sort of like the, the humidor girl. And uh, it's just a half-naked chick on a... On uh, Travel Humidor, just a, one of those iCar sticker things. And uh, it's great. It keeps five cigars in great shape, and it's a great conversation starter. Everyone's, hey, what do you got there? So it now, works out great. Now, 
Well, they do that event, the uh, smoke on the water. Actually, the, the humidor was a leftover from that event. Yeah. yeah I, th I think that goes over pretty well. I, I've never been down to it. No, I hear it's a fantastic event. I, I don't know whether Jerry's ever been there. I think he may have been there once. And, uh, you know, we, we've kind of talked a little bit about doing, you know, going down there and checking it out. But it's a, it's a few hours from me, and I just right. haven't been able to get down there. I'd love to get down and see the new uh, Draper's location. I know it's a, it's an older store, just purchased by Drapers, but uh, oh yeah, Bethesda, Bethesda Tobacco, I guess it was, or yeah, but because chances of me getting down into DC to see Drapers itself are, are really slim, and the, the manager over at the Drapers Bethesda is uh, Paul Spence, and he was the old CAO rep, and he's a really oh, nice guy. Yeah. So I like I like hanging out with Paul and talking to Paul. So it would be, it would be nice to get down there and see them. Yeah, I don't know. That that would be a good trip for you. I think it's like a two, three hour drive for me. I think I map quested it and it's like four hours. Yeah. It's it's a it's a bit of a hike. Yeah, it would be nice to go see it though. I know I've I've wanted to go see uh Drapers in D C but I just I I've been to D C and every time I go to D C I just wanna shoot people because traffic is just horrendous. It's crazy in D C. Kinda like Philadelphia. <laughs> Give me a small town, I'm happy. Uh, we won't even go into New York. <laughs> I, I don't see how those people stay sane up there. But anyway, well, we've we've kind of beaten off topic there. But uh, you know, we you know there was some interesting stuff about uh, cigar shops, and I you know I don't I would imagine everyone's sort of in the same boat that we are. Most people were you know now for me anyway. The uh, my local closed, and now I've, I've kind of got to branch out to get to another shop. And uh, and we discussed some pricing. And uh, I still got a lot of cigar left. And you know what? To be quite honest with you, I really don't care how long this video gets. So <laughs> I, I, I've i got uh, a few hours yet of uh, spare time. And uh, I plan on using them up, just sort of marinating in my own cigar smoke. Here we go. Hey, and recording time is unlimited. <laughs> <laughs> so uh again we're just well, kind of winging it so i yeah. i have no idea any questions <laughs> well no i just want to tell the people i mean when you watch this uh let us comment and let us know you know about your local shops if if you have the same problem if you have to drive you know half hour 45 minutes or longer to get to your local shop you know how how is the ambiance you know in you know with uh the people that are there or their shops that you just don't like you know let us know it, it's interesting to hear different takes i know brian Hugh well i i just hate brian Hugh. i think he can just walk to his shop i mean and, and he does walk i think it's like i don't know a few minutes well I, yeah you know it, it that just sucks <laughs> I, I i'm so jealous big time but, uh, yeah, I mean, it would be nice to be able to do that. But I guess, really, in all reality, it's just not possible, you know, especially in smaller towns. So, well, uh, it's kind of, I just kind of had a thought that kind of bridges into the whole cigar thing. Have uh, Have you ever tried smoking a pipe? No. You know, I, I have not. For, for months, I've been toying around with the idea. I wanted to give it a try. And the most appealing part of it was the fact that uh, you can really maximize your your spare time with a pipe so if i lay my daughter down and i know she's going to be asleep for half an hour i'm a slow cigar smoker so I, there's 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 not much that i could light up in that short period of time and i thought you know maybe with a pipe i can load the pipe for 20 minutes and just kind of unwind and, and you know keep the baby monitor next to me so i've been toying around with the idea of getting a pipe so last week when when uh, kensington was gearing up to close i i had asked kurt you know what what can you tell me about a pipe? Like I'm kind of interested, you know, I want to, I want to kind of give it a try. So he got me all set up with a very inexpensive pipe and, uh, four different types of pipe tobacco. And, uh, I gave it a shot. And by the time that we were closing or Kurt was closing, he was in no position to show me how to load a pipe. Right. He had, uh, he had hit the bourbon pretty good. So, uh, <laughs> 
So I was like, okay, you know, I'll just I'll go home, I'll check out YouTube, and it's, you know, I'll figure out how to do it. So uh, actually, packing a pipe is rather difficult. I have no, I had no idea how to do it. I was getting irritated. The smoke was like super hot, and uh, you know, I was I was kind of struggling with it. And then finally, someone on Facebook explained to me one way of doing it, and it worked out really well. But uh, it's kind of interesting. It's it's that it, smoke isn't the same as a cigar. It's it's drier. It leaves you, or at least the the tobaccos that I've tried, leaves you kind of parched. But man, the day after I came, the, the day after I smoked the pipe, I cleaned it out. I set it aside. But I had left all the the, the remainder of the burned tobacco in the ashtray because I I don't, I don't like dumping the ashtray right away. I like letting it sit overnight, make sure everything's cool. I don't want to fire. Right. So uh. So I, I leave this stuff in the ashtray, and then the following day I come down, and just the office was amazing. It smelled amazing. <laughs> it, was, it was like I, I've had air fresheners and stuff like that to to uh, to help with the the odor of cigars, but uh, man, those the pipes smelled fantastic. So I've been kind of toying around with the pipe a little bit. It's it's I'm I'm not totally sold on it. I you know I like the concept. It's it's kind of a nostalgic cool kind of a thing i like the aroma but uh, I, I need practice in actually smoking the pipe and, and doing it properly like with cigars if you puff too fast it ends up getting really hot but uh so i've been i've been toying around with uh pipes a little bit and it's it's kind of interesting i'm, I'm still you know a diehard cigar guy and uh you know it's, it's it's kind of funny because now i think of myself as the lazy type of smoker i don't have to load the pipe and put all this work into it i can just light up the cigar <laughs> All I have to do is clip it and light it. So uh, so that's kind of interesting. I, I sort of branched out and, and, uh, and gave a pipe a try. Yeah, I, I thought about it before. I remember, I mean, growing up, a lot of uh, our relatives, you know, and the family would smoke pipes. And the, the smell is just amazing coming off a pipe. I mean, compared to a cigar, I guess, well, a lot of pipe tobacco, I believe, is flavored, correct? Uh, you, you can get it both ways, but uh, a lot of the stuff that I got has a hint of something or something in it. Yeah. But it, but it and is that, very aromatic. Right. That's what I remember. You know, it, even smoking, when they would smoke it in the house, you know, it wouldn't, you know, every now and then you'll get a, you'll get cigars that have a real pungent odor to them that it's mm -hmm. like, Phew, oh, open a window. <laughs> but, you know, with a, with a pipe, it really seems like you can get some tobacco that'll really put off that, that scent that's really nice. But I, I never, I never ventured into it. I just, I, I just can't see me with a pipe hanging out of my mouth. I, I just, it's, I, it's an, a really odd sensation. But uh, you know, I, I think everyone has has had a grandfather or an older family member that has smoked a pipe at some point in time. And I came home actually, uh, Kennington, surprisingly, was open today just to sort of get rid of anything that wasn't nailed down. Uh, it was sort of an unofficial, I may be open, so if you're in the area, maybe swing by. So that's what I did, and he ended up being open. But while there, I picked up some more pipe tobacco, uh, just different types. I told him what, what I liked out of what he gave me, and you know he made some recommendations. But uh, I came home with this bag of stuff, and I sat it on the dining room table, and then a couple of hours later, my wife was walking by, and she smelled the, the pipe tobacco. And, uh, you know, she pulled the bag out, and she's smelling it, and she's getting all nostalgic, a little teary-eyed. You know, you know my, this smells exactly like the, the stuff my grandfather used to smoke. So, that you know, that was kind of cool. It made me smile. But, uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a cool hobby. I don't know if I'll ever like it as much as I do cigars, but, uh, it, but it's definitely cool and, and, and you know, fun. Well, I'm, I might have to tell Michael about that. Michael might have to try that. <laughs> Oh my! Well, I'm, I I don't know. Am, am I drinking fast or? <laughs> yeah. See, you created a monster. That's what it is. You know, like every time I reach over for, to to touch up my cigar because I'm talking too much, it seems like I grab another lighter. Yeah, I, I've, I've got, like, noticed four that actually sitting over there. Yeah, you've grabbed like different lighters and shown different lighters, and okay. <laughs> well, they're all just kind of sitting here because the the workhorse never leaves my side. The the old uh, creme brulee torch, right? The uh, the Prometheus table torch I've got sitting over here because I plan on reviewing it, and uh, the other the Prometheus retro is sitting over here because I reviewed it a 
couple of weeks ago, and it just hasn't been put anywhere. It's just sitting over here. So, you know, I just reach over and grab whichever one my hand winds up being closest to. <laughs> yeah, so, hey, everybody let us know about your pipe smoking experiences. Have you tried it? You know, what what tobaccos do you like for a pipe? I mean, there's probably, I, I know you can create your own blends, I guess. Mm-hmm. You know, you can mix and match and whatever. And and what what pipes do you like? I mean, I don't know if, you know, like what's, I I mean, you just started, Walt, so you, you, you might not know yet. You know, like for a, a cheap pipe compared to one of these, I mean, they have some expensive pipes out there. Mm-hmm. You know, is there a difference? Or is it just how how the design is, you know, with the, it's a more uh, aesthetic pipe. You know, I, I I don't know. I'd be curious to find out, too. Yeah, so if we have any uh, pipe smokers in the audience, please feel free to uh, to chime in and give me some pipe advice. Right now, I've just got the El Cheapo. It's actually, I think, like some sort of resin or plastic uh, pipe that I'm using. It, it was all that he had left, and uh, he said, you know, these are great starter pipes, especially if you're not sure whether or not you're going to keep up with the hobby. So... Gave it to me. Yeah, we just don't want to hear about pipes made out of soda cans and the metal screw together types and those types of things. <laughs> so, have you gotten a chance to smoke anything new? Tried anything out of the or not, not necessarily out of the ordinary, but did you try anything that that uh, jumped out at you, really surprised you? Well, it, that Rodrigo did, and I don't. I don't. You haven't had the chance to try them yet, have you? The no, Rodrigo. I, I was just amazed, and I mean, he's a small boutique, you know, manufacturer. He's just starting out. He's only in uh, a couple shops here and there. You know, he's not just nationwide or anything. But it really did. I mean, it it, it really shocked me for the price point how much flavor and everything else the cigar had. Um, you know, he, he almost reminded me of. Eh, I hate to make comparisons, but like uh, Dion, you know, with his Illusione, you mm-hmm. know, it, it just it just seems like that type of cigar. Mm-hmm. And if he can keep up the quality and keep up the 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 taste and everything else from the cigar, I, I think it'll it'll really blossom and do well. And it, it'll be interesting to see, you know, now that I've I've tried it here, you know, towards the the beginning, I it's, it'll be curious to see a couple years down the road how it how it fares out. But that's that's one of the main ones that uh, popped out to me, I believe, here in, here recently. Well, you know, well other had, than that, Partigas 150. But. <laughs> well, I had okay. a, a similar experience. The uh, it's it's I guess it's been several weeks now, but uh, I went I got down to another shop that I like going to, but it's a little bit further than my other shop. It's I don't know, probably an hour, fifteen minutes maybe. And while I was there, he ended up giving me a whole bunch of these uh, Curivari samples uh, that the company had sent him. Sent him, you know, tons of samples. I think they sent him like 60 cigars. But, uh, you know, he gave me two of each. And he says, here, you know, I got, they sent, when they, they sent samples, they sent me 10 count boxes. They sent me six of them. So here's two of two of each. And, you know, I came home and I smoked them. And I'd never heard of the brand before. I did a couple of reviews on, I think, two of the lines and you know, I was really impressed for not ever of hearing the, for never of her hearing of the brand. I was I was really surprised. And I thought it was good. They're a good boutique Nicaraguan cigar. Uh, the price point is reasonable, and uh, you know, I, I kind of wish I had more. They were they were good stuff. You know, the funny thing about that is when I was over at the uh, Columbia shop to meet Rob on Friday, mm-hmm. there was a police officer in there. <laughs> and he was asking, he was saying, you know, the cigars, and he he was asking a couple of things. He actually grabbed a Brian smokes a lot. Of, was it the uh, El Baton? Baton, but uh, yeah, yeah, El Baton. I think recently he's been smoking those. Yeah, uh, he picked up a couple of those, and we were talking, and he brought up that name. He goes, if you want to try a good cigar, he goes, he he's only seen them now. They're up in like Harrisburg, Lemoyne, something like that. One of the shops up there has them. Okay, and he he mentioned that name, the same same one you brought up. He goes, it, it's really a good cigar. So look at that. That's cool. Yeah, it was just kind of funny when you mentioned that name. It was a, <laughs> and that's the nice thing about going to a cigar shop. 
talking to people. It, it's amazing the people you meet. Yeah, you know, I haven't, I haven't tried a lot of new cigars. I did try the new Punch 10th Anniversary. I didn't have real good luck with it. The, the, I had like major burn problems, I had some hold, some voids in the filler. Uh, but it was a good middle of the road cigar. You know, it wasn't anything to really write home about. But uh, I've got four more that I'm looking forward to trying. You know, maybe it, maybe if they burn properly, they'll they'll have more flavor, and uh, you know, I'll enjoy them more. But uh, I need to get through those yet. And, you know, I really haven't had anything new recently. I Yeah, I really haven't either. Um, now, I'm, I'm really interested in trying the one that you reviewed, the New Wave, the E.P. Carrillo New Wave. <coughs> and uh, I got stomped down on buying a box of those from the bot. <laughs> Actually, uh, I bought a box of those, and uh, I they are fantastic. I was a huge fan of the Oliva Connecticut Reserve, or the Oliva yeah. Reserve Connecticut, and uh, and uh, EPC Cigar sent me some samples. They sent me two of the Elencos and two of the New Wave, and I reviewed them both. And the first New Wave was fantastic. The second one was the Robusto. I smoked the Toro first. The Robusto was very good as well, and uh, I got into... I was talking on Twitter, and Mike from Buckhead had mentioned that he he has had the line for a week, and uh, I got right on the phone with him and told him send me a box, you know, and 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 I've been going through them pretty fast. Actually, I, they're boxes of twenty, and I think I'm down to about twelve. I've I've handed a couple of a couple out, and uh, I've been smoking them when I can in the morning with coffee. I think they're fantastic. Yeah, I haven't seen them in any shops locally. You know that well, the two <laughs> that I've been to. Well, when I talked but, uh, to when I talked to Ernie Ernesto's son, he had mentioned that the, the those samples that he sent me were supposed to be coming out at uh, either end of March or early April. So this is probably still the earlier stages of that release, but I would imagine you're going to start seeing seeing them more within you know the local shops, whoever carries EPC stuff. Yeah, I, I am. I'm I'm really curious. I mean, the the shop over there in Columbia has a bunch of the. I guess they have the core line. They have. Uh, Oh, shoot, what's the one with the, I think it's a black label. The Elencos. It, oh, is that what it is? Well, that's okay. the, the new one's got a, a black band. Yeah, I don't, it didn't have a secondary band on it. I think it just had the the one band. It sounds like the the Elencos, which is the oh, okay. re, repackaged uh, edition Lamentada 2010. 2010, yeah. Yeah, they had those over there, but no new wave. And actually, this cigar is credited to uh, Ernesto Perez Carrillo, the the Artis Artisanos de Miami. The, at least the insert said uh, E.B. Carrillo won it. So uh, this is one of his products, and I like them a lot. Uh, it's actually one of my favorite general cigar products, and uh, smoking oh, really well. It's it's mellowed out quite a bit since I've had it because I, I don't know how many how long it's been aging. Probably year and a half maybe two years right. something like that so it's mellowed out a little a bit but it's still very flavorful and uh, i enjoy them it's just a shame they're at the bottom of the cooler because that's why i don't smoke them <laughs> well see now actually i can bring it up because this this is going to come out after my sunday review comes out but <laughs> i was impressed by the la gloria cubana serie n okay <clears throat> um that review goes up tomorrow ah the I did the Glorioso size, the the big sixty ring gauge, okay, or fifty I, no fifty eight. I'm sorry, I think it's fifty eight. I have some of the Robusto. General <clears> sent me a five pack with uh, you know press release information and things like that. I, I guess they send them to all the bloggers. I just happened to be on the mailing list, and uh, I got two samples from IPCPR. The and I, I haven't smoked either one of them, but the one of them had the N on it. The other one did not. And there was sort of some misinformation of just the trade show samples had the N on them just to appeal to consumer or to, to retailers, and, you know, the, the next edition wouldn't. I didn't hear that from General, but that was sort of the general consensus. But it looks like all of them have the N on them. And yep, I don't, they have the N. I don't know if that's just an applied piece of leaf or if that is yeah. an actual cutout and you see the binder or, or what the... It's actually, it looks like they took a stamp on, I don't know if it's a Banyo or a 
sun grown wrapper or, or what it was, but they took like a, a stamp and, and stamped out an N, and then they actually have people that glue them on. Okay, so it's just like a, a little <clears throat> piece of applied leaf. Yeah, and well, in my review, since you people watched it already, <clears throat> um, <laughs> you'll see sometimes I've had it where I, I've been smoking them and it, it heats up and the end actually falls off. <laughs> You know, I've I've had other ones where the end mm-hmm. stayed on, you know, and just burnt right through it. But but sometimes they they just end up falling off because the the glue gets heated up. Uh-huh. <clears throat> but uh, I, I it's neat. Um, if I was the one applying, I say this in the video too. If I was the one applying the end, I think I would have asked for a raise the minute they told me I had to apply all these little ends. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I that cigar really was was really good. I mean, for the price point, it's just, wow. I, I think I, I think I've said in the review, uh, box price is under $4 a stick. Really? That's yeah. good. I mean, even for the big size, even for that Glorioso yeah. size, it's under, under four bucks a stick. Y'all have to give it a try. I know when my, my local actually got some samples in when, uh, when the general cigar rep came in, I didn't get one of those samples, but, uh, I didn't get one of the samples because he was doing me a favor. He said that the the end stood for nasty. He did not <laughs> like his sample at all. And after talking to him, I you know I really wasn't into trying it. And I had these cigars show up, and I was kind of skeptical. Um, Brian smoked one, I think, on Siri N day. I don't remember what he had to say about it. I think he said it was uh, decent. But uh, but now after your your glowing recommendation, I'm kind of looking forward to to lighting one of those up. Well, now I and I haven't had. I actually got a, a free one from the coupon that was in a cigar aficionado. And that one I think is like the Robusto size. Okay. Uh, that I haven't smoked that yet. The only ones I've smoked were from the shop when I bought them. They were all the Glorioso. I, I've bought them like two or three times now. And that's, those are the ones that I bought. I was going to actually buy a box when I was over there and they didn't have any. <clears throat> that's the other bad thing about that. <laughs> They don't always have the same stuff, so. But yeah, I mean, are there any cigars out there that you're uh, anxious to try that you haven't tried yet? Huh. The um. I don't. The new the the cigar in Padron sounds really interesting. I I don't know whether it's just a slightly tweaked uh, anniversario of sixty four. Or, or or not? I haven't had a chance to uh, to actually watch both of Jerry's videos yet, but uh, I, I'm hearing really good things about it. The presentation looks great. Uh, you know, I like those wooden boxes. I'd, I'm I'd really be interested in trying those. Um, you know, the one cigar that's been out for a while that that uh, I haven't been able to try is the uh, the Illusion eight 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 Slam, the uh, the box pressed eight eight eight. You know, I don't know whether the blend is tweaked in that one. I don't remember from when Jerry did the the video. But I'm a big fan of the Illusion line in general. I smoke a lot of the 888. Uh, it's one of the few sizes that Kensington carried, and it was it, it was a size that fit really well for the time frame that I had. So when I would get there on Friday, I'd light one of those up, and just as I was finishing it, it was about time for me to head out and go pick up my daughter. So it was a very comfortable size cigar for the you know the time frame that I had, and I, I smoked quite a bit of them. Actually, I bought the last four today that Kurt had in stock. So uh, it's going to be going to be tough getting Illusion for me from now on since no other shops carry them in the area. But uh and I I've also heard really good I, I guess it's the Singular from Illusion, the the, yeah, new, I, the annual release that Dion yeah. does. I have never tried one of those that, and they sound really interesting. Um I hear a lot of good things about the Candela. I have one from the Twitter Brother Leaf Cocktail Hour. But the cap is busted on it. I haven't had a chance to glue it back on. I'm I don't have any pectin, but uh, you know I haven't really been eager to smoke that. The one, the last candela I had was a Camacho candela, and I really wasn't sold on it. And I know a lot of people are saying that Dion made candela cool and it's really good, but uh, you know I, I just haven't been really excited about it. I still have mine too. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know I, the uh, Jesus Fuego came out with a new a new cigar Brian that Brian smoked and reviewed. Um, I'm a fan of Jesus Fuego's stuff, so I'm really interested in trying that one. Again, I can't get it locally, and since I don't buy online, I, you know, if I can't, if I can't get it locally, nine times out of ten, I don't buy it unless 
I get it from Buckhead, in which case I'm generally getting a box. Right. Well, yeah. 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 I'd like to try the, uh, I still haven't tried the uh, Origins. I haven't, the, in the packs. You know, right, I, packs of five or something. Yeah, I was not crazy about the standard Origin when it came out a couple of years ago. It really didn't do anything for me. But in that original size, in that soft pack, I think it's fantastic. And uh, I think when when my local got them, he was selling them for $10 a pack. And I bought pro- at least half of what he had over a period of like three weeks. I was going there grabbing two of them or three of them at a time. So I, I don't have any more left, but they were a very good cigar. I, I like they're they're a quicker smoke too, right? Yeah, yeah, they're small cheroots. Right. Yeah, and well, and like you said, the singular, I I definitely want to try that, but you know, I'm in the same boat as you. I mean, there's no illusion. The you know, the closest place for Illusione is over in Gettysburg for me, and you're talking an hour to an hour and a half, and depending on traffic, sometimes maybe longer. And for you, it's even longer than that. <laughs> yeah, it's a couple of hours from home. But uh, I have been over there a couple of times, and I do like that shop and the owner, Gary. Yeah. Yeah, Gettysburg Cigar Company. It, it's, a, it's a little hole in the wall, but it's great guy. I mean, great service. It's amazing over there. But, uh, yeah, other than that, the new wave, you know, is, is one of the ones. that That's one at the top of my list that I really want to try. I mean... Now, like you said, like the Padrones, I have never had in one of the anniversarios or anniversaries or whatever you want to call them. I, I've never had. I always get sticker shock. <laughs> I just can't bring my, my hands there, and I'm like, no. <laughs> I just can't do it. Well, and, I, I got sticker shock with the uh, with the 45, the hammer. Yeah. my a, a shop in the area had it. And uh, I got one, but that was it. I, I never bought any more after that. But, you know, $26 price tag is not, you know, that's, that is, it's not quite my budget when I go to a cigar shop, but it is the bulk of my budget. Generally, I'm spending like 30 bucks when I walk into a shop, 30 $35. Right. Yeah, I agree. And I just, and, and again, I mean, as people know, I mean, from my reviews, I'm more of a mild to medium smoker. And even, you know, with that uh, Siri N, uh, some of those, I, I really wish they could have kept those all being a medium body the whole way through. But I've had some of them actually get really full body towards the end. And that that's the only downfall to them <laughs> for me. So how do you, how much variety do you generally smoke? Oh, wow. Quite a bit. Um, I'll have my... Steady ones, like, you know, like if I if I have a cigar in this morning, I, in, in this morning, yeah, whew, should I have another glass? <laughs> uh, you know, like the, the CAO Gold uh, Double Corona. I, I love that cigar for a morning cigar. It's, I mean, two and a half, three hour smoke for that puppy. Um, you know, the champagnes, the, the 10th anniversary champagnes, you know, in the Churchill. Another one, you know, I like a l- nice long smoke. Um, other than that, I'll, I'll pick and choose, you know, um, like the visions, you know, I, I grabbed like a champion set, uh, they were running them on sale online. You know, I grabbed them again. Um, I grabbed different things here and there. I, I, you know, I don't have, uh, like I said before, you know, like you have three coolers full, you know, I, I don't have that much of a selection, you know, so I just go with with what I have and try to get my mainstay. So I know at least I'll have something that I, I do enjoy smoking all the time. So I, I guess you probably have a huge variety that you smoke. Oh, don't you? No, actually be, when those coolers, when they get that disorganized, I just kind of store stuff in there and I don't really get into them much anymore. In the last couple of months, I've been using that desktop primarily for my, what I'm smoking. And because Kensington has been winding down for a while, there hasn't been a lot of new product that's come in. So when I'm going in there, I'm buying, you know, within, you know, I'm only buying certain things because stock is dwindling down. I'm, I'm buying what I like. Most of the time I'm buying uh, the, uh, the Illusion Online, either the 888 
88 or the Epernay Petit from Kurt. Actually, I, and when he still had the the MJ12s, I was buying those. Um, I'll, I'll buy the the Casada tributes every now and again. So you know, I was sticking to what was available to me, and that's what was starting to fill up my humidor, and that's what I would smoke constantly. Was I was grabbing what I purchased. Now, I find that when I get a box of something like. A couple of months ago, I bought a box of uh, the CAO La Traviata Maduros from Mike at Buckhead. And, like, every time that I had time in the morning to smoke a cigar, I reached for that Maduro, and I had it with a cup of coffee until that box was gone. Now I've got this box of New Wave Connecticut's. I'll probably go through those pretty much every morning. I'll grab one until the box is gone. So these days, I'm finding myself smoking less and less variety because... You know, time is kind of tight, and uh, and a lot of times I don't want to jeopardize it on something that I may not like. So in the morning, when I know, like if I'm working from home, and I know I've got two hours before uh, I need to, you know, move my, my office upstairs and watch my daughter and work at the same time, I try to, to smoke something that I know I'll enjoy, and I, you know, you know 100% will, I, I will get a good experience out of. And a lot of times that may be my only cigar of the day. So I find myself smoking a lot of the same stuff. So if you ever look down at the bottom of Stogie Review, the, the, the flicker streams that we have down there, you'll see a lot of the same stuff pop up for me because it gets fed. When I, when I snap pictures of what I'm smoking, it gets fed into that stream. And, you know, you can watch. I'm really predictable. It's, you know, day in and day out, you'll see the same things pop up. But, uh, but yeah, these days I'm finding myself smoking a lot of, uh, a lot of the same stuff. In the evenings, I'm trying to branch out a little bit, but uh, like with this one, right? But uh, you know, th these days I'm finding my variety is really waning. Yeah, I mean, I guess the most variety I get is usually for review cigars. I mean, that's you know, so well, like that Cigar.com series I'm doing right now. You know, there I know I'm going to have for was eight of them, I guess. So for eight weeks, I'm going to be smoking. You know, I know at least those will be something different I'll be smoking other than just normal stuff. But, yeah, I'm like you. I, I, I like to stick with something I know I'm going to like. I hate to I hate to buy something at a shop and then smoke it and just don't like it. And then I'm stuck, and then I just go back to my normal normal cigars anyway, you know. <laughs> well, back when Kensington was, was bringing in new stuff... <clears throat> And before we had my our daughter, you know, I loved smoking anything new, and you know, I all kinds of stuff. Uh, you know, if, if it, it was new and it came into the shop, I was picking it up. I, you know, I was really eager to try new new samples and things like that. But with uh, with time getting tight, you know, I'm, I'm I'm just falling into a really predictable pattern. Yeah, if I would have a local shop to smoke at, I think I would smoke a lot more of the new things because you know I could just pick up a cigar here and there, you know, to try it. You know, with the shops being half hour, 45 minutes away, you know, with, with the way my wife works and, you know, we only had one car, you know, it's hard for me to, to go. So when I go, I hate to pick up just like one cigar of something because then if I like it, it could be a couple of weeks till I would even get back there and then they might not have it anymore. <laughs> so, uh, you know, this this I said I didn't really care about how long the video was getting, but I kind of glanced up at the, the clock and it's it's getting oh. kind of long. But... Uh, <laughs> But we're uh, we're going to be getting together for uh, cigar fest cigar fest coverage shortly, the end of the month. Yep. So, uh, you know, is, is there anything you're looking forward to at cigar fest since it sort of fits into the theme? Well, I, the the biggest thing with me with uh, cigar fest and the events like that is getting to to see the manufacturers, getting to to talk to them, talk to the reps, you know, get to meet some of the people. You know, there's a bunch of people again going, you know, from Twitter and probably from uh, the forums, the Stoker Review forums, or even just the site, you know, that, that we'll get to talk to and see there. Um, it's great to see. It's mm -hmm. uh, until you go for one for the first time, it, it's just unbelievable the scale, mm -hmm. I, I really think. And that, that got me the first year. Now, you know, now the second year, that probably won't bother me so much. I'll, I'll be a little used to it but uh that, that i guess would be the main thing just being able to see the manufacturers get to talk to them you know a little more than what just a, the normal uh public buying a ticket gets to do 
and of course, I mean, we we had fun. Uh, well, we're, we're not parking again, but we're. <laughs> you saw that last year on the Cigar Fest. Uh, yeah, this year, if if we do park in that parking lot, Walt will have his camcorder with him. <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, it, it's just fun. I mean, it, it's it's a time when you get to go, and you know, everybody who's there enjoys cigars. You know, and enjoys what they're about, and it's what is it? I, I guess this year they sold another three thousand tickets or something. I think so. So you know, it's a lot of people going to be there. Well, this year we're going up a day early, and the reason we're doing that is uh, there's a Studio Tobacco tour event that's happening in the general area. I, I guess it's a few miles away in Stroudsburg. We're going to go check that out. So I'm kind of interested to see that whole uh, studio tobacco experience. Um, not necessarily looking forward to seeing the car. I think it looks like a rolling billboard. And uh, I thought it was really cool before they put all that advertisement on it. But, you know, I understand why it's there and things. But uh, So I'm looking forward to going up to the studio tobacco event. And I'm going to do my best to weasel as many Kane F. Lanceros as possible. Because uh, I absolutely love that cigar. And I haven't had any in quite a while now because, you know, they're not available for purchase. You know, they, they come in the Studio Tobacco Sampler, which you get from buying a box at an event. But uh, the the VP of sales is uh, in the area, and whenever I run into him, I try to get some off of him. Probably thinks of me as a cigar weasel by now, but uh, <laughs> I, I don't mind weaseling those cigars. Um, I, you know, I'm kind of interested in, in trying to get a hold of some more... Uh, Oliva C, or Oliva Siri V number fours. Those were a good short cigar, and uh, you know, aside from that, I'm really looking forward to hanging out with Jason again. Uh, I I really don't get to do it enough. Uh, you, you know, it seems like we only really hang out around Cigar Fest. He lives in the general area, so uh, we'll get we'll get together, hang out with Jason for a while, and then uh, on Friday we'll do the whole pre-event thing at with the Man of War event which is uh, generally a lot of fun and free beer, so that's always good. Um, and then during the event, I'm kind of interested to see how everything's going to work out because usually CAO has a, a rather large and active booth. With general purchasing CAO, I don't know whether it'll be like a combined effort or if CAO will still have a booth. And if it does, who's going to be manning it? Because the big draw before was both John Huber and Tim Osgener. With neither of them there, I'm kind of curious as to what's going to happen. And, of course, the I don't know whether the Flavorettes will be there. They were on an obvious draw. But, uh, you know, I'm kind of interested to see where that's going to go. Um, it's it's disappointing that Jose Blanco is not going to be there for La Aurora this year. Uh, La Aurora will be there. However, Jose Blanco's got some, some other things going on, so he's not going to be able to make the event. And... Uh, I've been looking over the event list a little bit to see what vendors are most likely to be there, and uh, you know it's it's a it's usually it's kind of the same people that have been there the last couple of years. Uh, I don't remember seeing any other new faces. I think Abe from Pinar del Rio may have a booth this year, but I'm not quite sure. But uh, in general, it should be a good time. Yeah, then that you brought up about CAO, I'm I'm actually curious uh, with the nub booth at when. Sam Lucia, you know, was nub, and they had that big booth at the back with the music, and you know, Sam, Sam was just a blast. I mean, <laughs> throwing the football around, you know, he he just had a blast. And I'm curious how the studio to back is going to do that. I don't, I don't know if they're going to try to keep the same theme or if they're going to change it or. From what I understand, it's going to be the same general setup with you know you know exciting things going on, rolling music playing, things like that. But uh, you know I'm 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 looking forward to seeing how people take to Brian Sholey. I've met him; um, he's a nice guy, but um, he he's not with Sam Lucia, so I'm kind of curious to see how that's going to work out. Sam was a very social individual. You know, he was big on the forums, big on Twitter. Uh, very easygoing, easy to easy to talk to, and he was very willing to talk to everyone. Uh, Brian doesn't seem to have the same Twitter presence. You rarely see him do anything on Twitter these days, and when he does, it's very uh, sort of event set set centric. So uh, you know, I'm, I'm curious to see how that's going to go over. 
Yeah, that's true. I mean, with everything going to a social media aspect nowadays, it's uh, it's so nice to have that ability to, to talk to the manufacturers right there on Twitter. Excuse me. I mean, the reps, you know, anybody involved with the company. And you're right. I mean, it, it has died down tremendously in that aspect. Well, you know, the same thing happened with CAO. When John Huber handed yeah. over the CAO account, it fell flat on its face. Yeah. And the, uh, the, the, the tweets coming from CAO Cigars was, I, I don't know, they were so, like, generic and company-centric that it, it got to the point where, you know, I really wasn't even interested in seeing it anymore. With John Huber, there was so much going on, and he was willing to talk about other brands and what he liked and what he didn't like, and... And just be a person rather than, you know, more or less a corporate <clears throat> figure that, uh, you know, the, the, the interaction with CAO has really dropped off. And, uh, and again, when that, when that rolls over to Cigar Fest, I'm really curious to see what's going to happen. Yeah, it, it will be. And, you know, it's, it's still a thing where how many of the people who go to Cigar Fest are actually involved with social media? I mean, I know there are some on Twitter. <clears throat> but, you know, compared to 3,000 people that bought tickets, how many of those people are actually on the social media aspects, you know, the Facebooks, the Twitters, things like that? But, you are you know, and like you said, it will be curious to see how that interaction works out, if they notice the difference, if they don't care about the difference. You know, it, it was nice, like you said, you know, John Huber is involved. I mean, he would, he would just talk to you as a person. And... It was it was just great, <clears throat> and that's why I like to see in social media. I hate when the companies come on and just want to do a, a company centric, you know, Facebook or Twitter or I mean, if if you don't get more personalized with it, I think it defeats the whole purpose of a social media in, in general. I mean, there's de de there's definitely uh, an advantage that it, for companies to do you know Twitter and Facebook and things like that. And, you know, from a marketing perspective, you know, I can I can understand why everyone sort of shoves their brand down your throat. But it's sure. the ones that are more laid back and willing to inject their personality into it that seem far more successful than your CAO cigars that's just, you know, tweeting about, hey, look at this new one that I'm smoking. I'm not going to tell you anything about it. I'm in Nicaragua. Yippee. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, you know, that's the kind of – and that's as far as it goes. Yeah, I, I agree, and it's, you know, it's like, a, it's okay, okay, you know, shove your brand down our face, but talk to us also. You know, don't don't just shove it and say, okay, that's it, I'm done. And that's, that, that's what I think is the hard part about the social media, and that's where I think, you know, John Huber understands it, I think Sam Lucia understood it, uh, Jose Blanco understands it, and... You know, there, there's more, you know, uh, Dion, you know, I, you know uh, even Pete Johnson even gets on. He, he'll talk to you as a person, you know. Yeah, you don't get that sort of fly-by, you know, drop company information and leave right. kind of a feel from these guys. Right. And that's, I, I, like, I, I like the idea that they're more personable with you. You know, I, I don't like the idea of a company... You know, like Walmart, we get a Twitter account or something, and they would just post deals up or something. You know, it's like, what's the point? It just don't make much sense. Now, like you said, in a company aspect, they're, they're, they can hit a lot of people in one shot. But as a personal, you know, as a person on it, it's like, eh, okay. <laughs> I, I think for people like us that use it for so, social interaction and less – of a news source. I mean, there are people that subscribe to certain things on Twitter, you know, just to get the deals or get the Daily News Digest or things like that. For for people like those, uh, you know, I'm sure that, like, the CAO account does a great job in providing them the bare bones right. information and, and, you know, they don't care about the social aspect. But, you know, for people like us that are, that are on there countless hours throughout the day, you know, at various times, and, and use it as a, as a means of conversing with one another it's it's a totally different animal and you know not some companies just don't quite get that it seems yeah i agree i agree and i i think we talked before about it with uh you know when companies hire somebody to do 
you know, their social media, it gets, as long as they're a person in the company that knows the company, that knows the everything with the company, it's not too bad. But if, if you just bring in an outside company to run a social media aspect, I think it just kills the whole... Then it kind of turns into the telemarketer that, uh, that's exactly. reading from a script. Oh, okay, you want to know this? So let me just flip to the page in the binder and I'll read it to you. Yeah, you know, outsource it, you know. Just be done with it. Just just outsource it to a different country, and there you go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's. So uh, you know, we were we were talking about Cigar Fest a little bit, and uh, we, and thank God uh, Cigar Expo was moved this year. Um, yeah. If it was held at the same time as it was last year, I wouldn't be able to go. My daughter's first birthday, but uh, this year it's at the end of August. I'm really looking forward to going, and it is at a new location this year. Uh, famous. I guess I was talking to Hayward two years ago when I did uh, Cigar Expo coverage, and he had mentioned that Arthur had purchased so much land, you know, like 10 years in advance, he got a really good deal, and he was willing to just kind of sit on it in in the event that the company grew large enough to take advantage of putting up a new building and things like that. And I actually got to see the new building. Oh, did you? On paper. Yeah, my the uh, there's this... I, I work for a, an architectural millwork company, and we have a sister company that does installation. They install millwork and things like that. And uh, the company, the sister company, is actually bidding on installing all of the work that that's going in this new building. And I got a chance to look at the blueprints. So, so uh, I it, it's it looks pretty good. I'm not quite sure about the layout. They're putting a restaurant and bar into the building. However, it's kind of weird, the layout. Like uh, in Pennsylvania, we have this law that says that. Uh, the only time you can smoke in a restaurant atmosphere is if you do if your if your sale your food sales are, have to be so low, and uh, they've got a restaurant inside of famous smoke shop. So I'm wondering if they're going to leverage their online sales in order to keep the the cigar into the business way up there, and and be able to have a smoking restaurant because the restaurant is attached; it's not separate. There's uh, like a door that goes through from the lounge right into the restaurant, and uh, so I'm curious to see how that's going to work. Um, you know, from what I hear, it's like out in the sticks, so it's it's going to be interesting to see how the how the place takes off or or how it's received. But uh, you know, looking at the blueprints, it looked pretty good and and pretty big too. So, well, yeah, yeah. that's what I and well and with the old famous smoke shop, uh, hey, we were saying last year, you know the the storefront was an afterthought and for this for the new one they're actually going to have i guess a bigger store and lounge and everything in it yeah they're, they they've got a dedicated lounge where as right now the lounge is sort of in the storefront it's just a couple of chairs sat in a semicircle yeah and uh so the new the new place is going to have its own lounge it's going to have uh, a walk-in humor uh retail space and um, it, it's it's a huge improvement as far as you know, as far as a customer, a local customer is concerned, it's it's a it's a huge upgrade. So uh, it should be much nicer this year at Cigar Expo because last year you were packed shoulder to shoulder inside that inside that small sales space. If you were trying to escape the summer heat and you wanted to get into the air conditioning, right? Yeah, I remember that being there. <laughs> yeah, it got pretty hot outside, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm curious. Uh, but like you said, if they're just uh, bidding on getting stuff done and and they want to have this whole thing up and running and and ready to go by cigar expo yeah that was one of the things i said too was that you know it, it seems kind of late that uh yeah. that they're they're picking up contractors to install this stuff you know there's generally a lead time but this one seems to be kind of tight you know and i don't know whether things were just slow to get started or you know the, the permit process took longer than expected or or what the case may be, but you know, millwork installation is generally one of the last things to happen. You generally, do it shortly after everything is painted. Right. So, yeah, the and, and that's and that's the later stages of everything. So, it's uh, it may be a little tight construction wise, but uh, I think they should be able to make it, especially with with the event happening at the end of August. I don't know if the store is going to be open full before then, or if this is going to be sort of like the grand opening. Yeah, it'll be neat to see. Because uh, the last store was in, it was like a business park. Yeah. And I, I, I have no idea where this new one is. I know they said it's not, it's not far, but I don't know honestly where it is. 
No, I, I hear it's within a couple miles of the old store, but it's sort of like in the middle of nowhere. Not that their old store was like, yeah, in a, it was you the, know, in the hub yeah. of the city or something. It was in an industrial park in the middle of nowhere. Right. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's, it's in, I'm, I'm interested to see how this how it's going to turn out. Yeah, it will be. In, yeah, that was a great, I had a great time there last year at, at Expo. Uh, you couldn't make it last year something about having a having kid born or something i don't know you know <laughs> <laughs> well mike i think uh i think we talked quite a bit and we can we can probably safely wrap this up oh yeah about now so uh any any last thoughts before we uh kill the recording let us comment let us know what you think of it all let us know if you're going to cigar fest cigar expo i mean the this will probably be up before Cigar Fest. Oh, definitely. Yeah. So, yeah, let us know. I mean, we're always open to smoking a cigar with people while we're there. Sounds good to me. So, uh, until next time, happy smoking. Keep smoking.